Thank you, Sister Kay. So before um, we get to some good preaching, um, I'll let the kids tell us what they're thankful for. Bethel Baptist, what are you thankful for? Amen, amen. For who? Home, all right, yeah. Amen, amen. A lot to be thankful for. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. And a lot of my, a lot of my old timers I talk to, and I, not that y'all, not, not, not y'all, of course. Um, <laughs> that they always, they always tell me some of the simplest things. I'm thankful for being alive. I'm thankful for being able to walk. I'm thankful for the air I breathe. I'm thankful for being able to talk. There's so many little simple things we can be thankful for, but there's a lot to be thankful for. But I like what Mary said. I'm thankful for God. That's the one thing that we, we can be thankful for that doesn't change. You think about it, a lot of the things that we're thankful for, those things, they change. They can change real quick. But thank you for Jesus. Thank you for God. So with that being said, who's ready for some good preaching? Me too. Me too. Y'all let me know if y'all hear about any. I'm always looking for a good sermon. So today's verse is going to, I'm going to be a one verse, one verse preacher today. Uh, but this is a good verse. It's a verse that you can memorize. Brother, brother Robert, our, our worship leader, also our Bible, our Sunday school teacher, uh, is always said, uh, for the almost, almost, God, can y'all believe that? It's almost been, almost been three years I've been preaching here now. Time goes by quick. January will be, if you count my interim, it'll be, it'll be three years. Um, but the three, almost three years I've been here, Rob, brother Robert has always said, memorize scripture. Right? Amen. Memorize scripture. So this is one verse you can really, you know, I think you could really, it's really good to memorize. It's give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I, I pray that you, you, you guide me this morning, Lord. I thank you for the preparation. There's the sermon prep. I thank you for all the mentors, but most of all, thank you for the Holy Spirit. I ask that you, um, guide this message and that um, you hinder or that you just bind any evil. We bind that in the name of Jesus Christ and just um, allow everybody to have uh, receptive ears and receptive hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. This verse, it commands believers to give thanks to the Lord, not for everything, but in everything. There's a big difference. Certainly, we ought to be thankful for not just for uh, not just because we are told to be thankful, but because we have much to be thankful for. There's a story of, I want to tell you all a story. There's, there's a story of, and this is a good one, so I want to make sure you all are paying attention to the story, okay? It's, um, there's a story of two old friends who bump into one another on the street one Friday afternoon. So it's a Friday afternoon. One of them looked sad, almost on the verge of tears. His friend asked, why are you so sad, my old friend? The sad fellow said, let me tell you, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, he says, uh, an uncle of mine, he, he died, and he left me $40,000. The other guy said, well, that's a lot of money. But two weeks ago, the guy goes on, but two weeks ago, uh, a cousin I never even knew, he left me $85,000. And the other guy, he sounds, sounds like you've been blessed. And he's, I don't understand. Why are you, why are you so sad? But then, then, then the guy, that he interrupted, but then the guy said, but last week, he said, get this, my great aunt passed away. I inherited almost a quarter million dollars. And now the guy's like, he's really confused. Well, so far all you told me is all this money that you've been getting, but why are you so sad? And the guy said, well, it's Friday and I haven't gotten anything yet. <laughs> I haven't gotten anything yet. You see, that's a problem, church. That's a problem with, 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 with getting gifts on a regular basis. And matter of fact, if it, even if it's a gift, we, we, we eventually become too expected. And what do we see? We see this problem in our culture, in American society today. It's the entitlement thing. It's the entitlement thing that we have going on. And, and let, me, let me be clear, it's, it's in all, all cultures um, that spread through American society on almost every level. Entitlement. This entitlement mindset. You know, we have been blessed to, to live in the land of the free, and also the land of the plenty. We talk about freedom, but it's also the land of the free and the land of plenty. 
We have so much. We have so many things that we we are we are bountiful in and we have plenty of, you know. However, as a result, though, we've become as a whole American society has become self-righteous. We've definitely become smug. Definitely. <laughs> some 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 areas of the country are more smug than others. We can say that. Uh, and, and, and But for most of all, a lot of people out there, they become unworried because they think they're good. They think everything's good. They think that they're so good and everything they're doing is so good. And it's all about them. It's all about the self-righteous attitude that they forgot about their spiritual standing and they don't care about their spiritual standing. They're definitely not thankful for the life that they truly have. Not thankful for the opportunity that they have in Jesus if they if they've done that. And they're definitely not interested in the opportunity that's extended to them. You know, in fact, you know, many times we're completely un- unwilling to give thanks for anything in some cases. So Swindle, Chuck Swindle once wrote, I have discovered that thankfulness is a very frickle thing. Often our thankfulness focuses on the things that are physical in nature. We are thankful for our health. We all said that. I'm always thankful for my health. We're thankful for our, our families, our homes. We are thankful, which we have a right to be thankful for. Uh, and it's good things to be thankful for. We are thankful for our financial stability. We are thankful for the things we have. Yet all the things are subject to change. Again, I have to stress that, church. A lot of the things that we're thankful for, we have to we forget that they're subject to change. Our health, as we've seen it, have, can change so quickly, so quickly. You know, Carl and I were, were talking this morning about how many people have just gotten sick. They just get, they, you know, and if people get sick, that's, that's natural. But, you know, lately and in, our, in a day and age we live in, a lot of people, they, they come down with, with sickness, whether it be from cancer, whether it be from, from just being inside and not mobilized. You know, bad diet. A lot of people that I know have have, have turned to drugs and alcohol, uh, and, and it's still is a sickness of, of, in a sense. Um, but we just see we see that. So things can change in our life. Things can change so quickly. But you know, even our bank accounts can change. We know that <laughs> our bank accounts could run dry real quick. What do we do then? What do we do? How how does that affect our thankfulness? And then Chuck, Chuck Swindle writes, um, I would like to suggest that we remain thankful for all the physical blessings we enjoy and that we learn to look beyond those changing things to some things that never change. In the verse that I just read, church, there are some unchanging reasons for Thanksgiving. And I want to share those unchanging reasons for Thanksgiving. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's talk about our Savior. His abiding presence, his abiding presence, regardless of, 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 of where the path of life leads, you as a child of God will never walk alone. You will never walk alone when you know Jesus. That never changes. His assistance, the Lord's presence, that never changes. The word helper, the word helper in, in, in the text, not today's text, but the word helper comes from a word which means to run. The idea is that when we are in need, the Lord runs to our aid. He is our comforter. Also, his anchoring presence. I like this one here. Now, lean in closely for church, to this one, church. One of our greatest sources of thanksgiving is in the truth that Jesus never changes. What he was then and what he is now. From before creation on to eternity, Jesus has never, nor will he ever change. He will never change. He is still I am. We can always be thankful for our Lord Savior, who is still I am, who is still alive today, who never changes. His love never changes. His love never runs out. He never runs on empty because he is a God of infinity. Another thing that never changes, church, is our salvation. Our salvation, it never changes. Of course, the, the, the argument from, from some of um, 
other, um, I guess, other different types of denominations and, 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 and critics will say, well, well, that, that once saved, always saved. Well, that, that doesn't work. No, it does. It does work. The key thing to it is, though, is that if you are never saved at all, so you, once you are saved, you are truly saved, you are always saved. And that transformation is a real transformation. It is a transformation that shows and bears fruits. So therefore, if you are a real Christian, your salvation never changes. But remember this, church, we can't forget the price of that salvation. The price. We can be thankful that, 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 that God, we can thank God that salvation is given without cost. Is purely an operation of grace. Now think how you came to know him. Dead in sin, and he sought you. Dead in sin, and he sought you. He called you. I remember when he called me. Do y'all, y'all remember when he called you? <laughs> I remember it clear as a bell when, when Jesus called me. I remember I was 11 years old when he called me. And, you know, when I was saved, the calling never stops. He calls you that first time, but there's going to be a lot of different calls in that. There's going to be a lot of different conversations in that. So that never changes. But the call, we all remember how he called you, how unique that was, how special that was. We know how much it means to, to us to to want that person that hasn't really answered that call to pick up that call. He died for you. He redeemed you and he keeps you. That's what I love about the Bible. Sometimes it's so simple. It really is. It's meant to be simple. It's clear. He redeemed you. He keeps you. All you did was exercise the faith he gave you. And he did it all. But remember the pain of it, the pain of it for the price for us was low. For God, the price was unimaginable. Our salvation cost God the life of his son. His death on the cross is what provided salvation for you and I. There is no way that that we can adequately, uh, you know, Properly describe, I guess, the details of the death of of the Lord Jesus. But the prophet Isaiah tells us something about what he suffered for us. We can be thankful every day. And even though he knew that we were and what we would be like after he was he saved us, that he still went on the cross and he died for our sins. He already knew what everything was going to be, who everyone was going to be. But yet he went anyways. He died undying love for us. He died and then he rose and he was made alive. The purpose of it. We can be thankful for the purpose of it. We're told that he suffered the death. He did so that he might sanctify the people. The word sanctified means to separate uh, means to uh, means to separate from vain things and to set apart for God's use. That's why Jesus died. He died to take vile sinners out of their sins and set them apart from this world for the glory of God. Our separation. The call of this verse and today is, is for us to do on the outside what he has already done on the inside. The call in this verse is for us to do On the outside, what Christ has already done on the inside for us. That is, he has set apart, set us apart inwardly through the redemption of the blood of Jesus. He is telling us to be different. We ought to be thankful to the Lord that he has made that change in us. Be thankful for that change he has made in us. The very fact that we don't live like we used to. That we don't find enjoyment in all the things of the world. We used to find, I used to find enjoyment in the things of the world. I, I remember growing up, I always thought it was so funny why Granny Jackson, 
I haven't told a Granny Jackson story in a while. So Granny Jackson used to, you know, Granny Jackson, she enjoyed, she enjoyed a good action movie every once in a while. Well, maybe more than every once in a while. She enjoyed some, some mafia movies. But she would get mad when they had cuss words in it. And I used to say, well, Granny, well, why, why, it's an action movie. It's, it's, it's a mob movie. They probably said those bad words. And I started thinking, well, that's kind of silly. You know, why would she want to, well, I guess we could probably say why would she watch an action movie. Let's talk about the cuss word part. But, you know, when I was, when I was younger, I thought that was silly. But now, older, the longer I walk in, 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 in the faith and the more I look at my children, I say, well, Granny Jackson was right. She was right a lot of times. She didn't want to be exposed to cuss words. She didn't want her kids exposed to cuss words. And so the life that we've lived before, the things that we thought were okay are, are not okay because it, it, it is an insult to God. We love our God. We respect our God. And we want to be closer to him. We don't want to be things that draw us away from our God. We can be thankful for that. Thankful that we have a yearning in our, our hearts and our souls that draw us closer to God, that want us to be next to him, that want us to learn more about him and be like him and walk like him and walk with him. We can be thankful for those things. We're thankful that he has made a change in us. Our sanctuary. Sanctuary, one, one, hymn, we didn't, one hymn we didn't play, play today, and I was thinking about what was the song Sanctuary. We are living in a world that is constantly changing. And all of our hopes, if all of our hopes are placed in this world and in the physical realm, then we are really going to be disappointed more and more and more. Nothing but disappointment. I've, I've met, I've met some, I met some people that, that are actually really good moral people. They're not believers, but they're good moral people. And all I've seen is, in their lives is, is, is failure. They spend a whole life, they'll spend their whole lives striving to do what is right for the world, what is right for society. But they don't know Jesus. And at the end, they always end up empty, end up bankrupt, end up miserable. I'm saying bankrupt inside, not financially, in some cases. But we'll be disappointed more and more when we put our cards in the world. We can thank the Lord that when this journey is over, and it does end, we know that. When this journey is over, we have a city, a city awaiting us, a city where we can rest from labors, we can be out of harm's way, and we can enjoy the presence of the Lord and the presence of those who have also loved the Lord, who are our family members who have loved the Lord. We can enjoy that when this is over. But right now, sanctuary, like a church building, <laughs> but better than a church building, sanctuary is just experiencing God. Did y'all know that? Wherever you are as a believer, you have sanctuary with Jesus. You can experience him wherever you are, whoever you are, whenever you want. That is sanctuary. And finally, as I close, the land the plane, flaps down, flaps out. I don't know which, I don't know if I ever get it right, Bob, but I think it's flaps, flaps, flaps out, right? Uh, we need to take a close look at the real blessings of the Lord, church. This Thanksgiving, I want us to remember the, the real blessings that we have in the Lord. Again, it's okay to be thankful for the things that we, we have, the physical health, the, you know, the, the homes we have and the, the food we have. But let's be thankful for the things that do not change. And that's our relationship with Jesus. And that is the fact that he doesn't change. We be thankful for him. Let's be thankful for all the things that he gives us. Let's praise him for our health, though. Let's praise him for our health. Let's praise him for our families, our financial blessings, and so on. Let's, take, let's not take those for granted. But let's learn to be more thankful for the things which we can never lose. Let's learn to be ever thankful for those things that cannot change. When all the physical blessings have faded and we find no reason for praising them, let us be thankful, the Lord, that there are some things that will never change. In these things, we have un, an unchanging reason. 
An unchanging reason for eternal thanksgiving. Why not come before him now and be thankful for who he is and for what he has given you and I? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everything you do, Lord. We're so thankful for your unchangingness, your your awesome power that never changes. You're just a wonderful, beautiful Savior. We, we love you and we thank you for you, Lord. We just ask that you continue to bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I dare not end a sermon without offering a lifeline. And this, this invitation is extended to this sanctuary and also to the folks that are watching us on the feed. Uh, I know I had some folks that, that were joining us from upstate. And I don't know how you got on there, but I thank God that you're on there. I ask that you, uh, if you're anyone who's watching, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make a profession of faith right now. Same thing with folks here, too, as well. I know most of us are, 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 are saved, I believe, but you can also come up here for prayer. If you need special prayer, let us pray with you. Folks, start typing in your prayer.